Okay, before we start, we would like to announce the launch of our Patreon. The link is in the description. The majority of the documentaries we make are a censored version. We will be releasing the uncut versions on the Patreon, as well as exclusive content that will probably not reach YouTube for some time. This story is censored, but if you wish to see the unedited version, sign up to the Patreon. Today's video is partially sponsored by Outs. Outs is a growing general store, providing essential items for those out active. These HUD Tech military cargos. These is fire. A lot of you don't know how to dress these days and you know it. Some of you are old heads, out of touch, and don't know what to buy, so get these. Also, if you're not one to wear shorts in the summer, these joints will provide you with some style. Just make sure you got on some good feats though. These are $18, light bread. Get yours, they have them in different colors. We got ours already. Today, we are taking a trip uptown. Now we haven't really touched the North Bronx, so we will begin to elaborate on some things. There are a lot of moving parts. Through a series of upcoming videos, we will profile the different housing projects and their members, before getting into the whole uptown war. Today, we will start with the Boston Secor Houses. Completed in 1969, Boston Seeker Houses includes four buildings containing 538 apartment units. Located in Eastchester, the complex is bordered by the IRT Dyer Avenue Line, Boston Road and Steenwick Avenue. The crew that harbored the area was called the Slut Gang. But if you're a little more plugged in, you would know that they went by, the paid in full gunners. This a faction of the YG's gang, meaning young gunners. They also had numbers in the neighboring co-op city buildings. They would war with their rivals, known as the BMB Gang, or, Bout Money Bosses. There are a faction of the YBs, who were at war with the YGs. In future videos, we will tell the stories from the YBs side of things. The BMB Gang operated in the vicinity of White Plains Road. Eastchester Gardens, the home of the two fly eggs, were also depicted to have a beef with Boston Seeker. To some degree that is true, but being that there were allied high-ranking members in both Eastchester Gardens and Boston Seeker, the violence wouldn't get too far out of hand. Besides, they were both YG sets. There are many notable players, so let's jump right in. So Paparazzi Poe is an original member of the YG's gang, and plays a part in its furtherance. He is a controversial figure due to his father allegedly being Alpo, the famous and now deceased drug kingpin from Harlem. There are many opinions about him, however this is not a Poe story. Anyway, in the earlier days, Poe's family lived in a three-bedroom apartment in the Webster houses in the Bronx. He had one sister and three brothers, two of them being twins, and were younger than Poe. They would later be known as Twin Poe and Twin Flocka. The twins' pops and moms lived in the house as well, and began to feud with each other. The couple separated and the family experienced hardships. Poe's moms was forced to care for her five kids with minimal support. Around 2004, Poe's moms moved to Boston Seeker houses. Now during this time, Poe would be getting into trouble in the streets. He would catch a youthful offender charge for drugs, as well as a gun charge. He would go on to be described as someone with an extensive record, including two violent felony offenses. Poe might have went to Horizons facility, a jail for young people, not sure. What is clearer though, is his alliance with other prominent early members of the YGs. We will mention them later, and we covered some of them. In 05, Poe would be locked up. While he was away, the twins, Twin Poe and Twin Flocka, would continue to push the YG agenda in the Boston Seeker houses. They will get into their own fair share of issues. As for Twin Poe, during 2012, he was allegedly among eight thugs who surrounded two men, ages 17 and 20, at Hunts Point Avenue and Bruckner Boulevard at 4 a.m., the source said. The victims fled into a nearby subway station and onto the platform of a northbound number 6 train. The gang caught up with them there, and one of the thugs demanded one victim's marmot jacket. The victim refused, and as a goon tried to hit him over the head with a gun, the weapon fired, striking Twin Poe in the leg. Twin Poe was busted at the scene, Crom Guns, 16, who stayed with his wounded pal as their accomplices fled. Both men were charged with robbery. During early 2013, he was convicted of robbery due to his being part of a group of slut gang members, who stole a pair of headphones from the victim. Following this conviction, he was sentenced to one year in jail. In 2017, Twin Poe would be indicted in the Slut Gang Rico case. He would do four years, but end up back in the feds shortly after his return home. As for his brother, Twin Flocka, he would get into trouble in Connecticut. 
The charges stem from an incident on Windaway Road, where two men were found with multiple stab wounds. Police found two knives in the house, both with blood stains. The victims told police that they sold drugs to one of three men who came to the house that night. According to arrest affidavits, one of the victims told police he sold them lean. Lean is a liquid mix of prescription-grade cough syrup, soft drink and hard candy. Court documents say a bag containing prescription Xanax pills was also stolen. One suspect allegedly asked two to see the victim's wax, a cannabis concentrate. Two of the men then allegedly began stabbing the victims. A dude named Diego was identified by the victims. In turn, Diego would confirm his accomplice named C. identity to police. Diego told police that after the robbery, he ran into the woods and called a lift to take him home. Diego was arrested in August 2018 for home invasion, robbery, accessory to assault and conspiracy to commit assault. City police took in 24-year-old C into custody after he was released from a New York correctional facility where he was being held as Diego's accomplice in the manslaughter case. He pled not guilty and was being held on bond for a court appearance. Twin Flocka was identified through DNA evidence at the crime scene. He was arrested in August 2019 for home invasion, conspiracy to commit assault, assault, accessory to robbery, and accessory to larceny. He would blow trial and now faces 70 years. As for Diego, he would die in a car crash in 2019. Schuster, a Hudson Valley attorney, was driving his BMW 750 on Route 172 near Darlington Road in Bedford after leaving a holiday party. While driving, he crossed over the double yellow line into the oncoming lane of traffic and struck Diego's vehicle head-on. Diego, 22 at the time, was pronounced dead at the scene of the crash, while Schuster was hospitalized with injuries before turning himself into police custody in Bedford. He was drunk, but only got two to six years. That's it for the pose for now. This is more of a profile outline, so let's move on to one of the most connected original YG members, Jules. For those that know him, they speak of his intelligence. Some say that he might have been racking in the dollars in Silicon Valley or Wall Street if he wasn't from a Bronx housing project. Also he also was a double jacker. This is when you can jack a smaller gang under a larger gang. In addition to him being YG, he was Desperado Miller. Mostly the whole seeker was Desperado Miller. The founder of the Millas was named Red Ice and was also from Seeker. The Millas had the numbers in 06 to 08 from the street to prison, kind of like how apes have it now. Within the blood structure, popularity goes in phases. In the 90s and early 2000s, the majority was Billy's and G-Shine. In mid-2000s the Millas pick up steam. In the 2010s the hats, mainly Max and Hounds, pick up momentum. Now, in the 2020s the Stones apes pick up the torch. As for Jews, he was in the streets early. Around age 13, he would get locked up. On his juvenile stinked, he would encounter others who would be the leading members. At 14 he would get busted for guns and drugs. He would do time with notable guys, Two Flight A, Charlie Rock and others who we haven't mentioned, like Jeff Ivey and Young Briss. They were all locked up as juveniles. Jews would become YG under Tay. Somewhere along the line, he would stop jacking Two Fly under Tay and start jacking paid in full gunners. Jews would earn his GED at 15, while in Brookwood Secure Center, a max security juvenile prison. Most can't pass the test even when they are 18 in there. Ironically Two Fly Tay was in Brookwood at the same time. Jews would help him prepare for parts on the test that he felt he was struggling with. He came home from juvenile in 2008 and by 2009 landed on Rikers Island with a gun charge. He would do eight months for it. Came home in 2010, then, in 2011, caught another case in upstate New York for drugs and robbery. That amounted to a four-year sentence. Then in 2017, the slut gang Federal Rico case hit. He ended up pleading to a five-year sentence on that. While fighting his case in Brooklyn MTC, so were other YG sets. He reunited with Two Fly Tay and others. MS-13 and YG was and still are beefing heavy in Brooklyn MTC. Jews and Deli Dell, another member we spoke about, assaulted a MS-13 member together when they caught him slipping. MS-13 does the same when they catch YG guys slipping too. Jews will be home soon, probably after or before this video drops. Some expect more out of him, as he is smart and has already given about 13 years of his life to prison. Also from Boston Seeker, his light feet, light feet was Desperado Milla Blood, but also was Dimes R Us, which is a South Bronx crew. 
they were known to harbor the Mitchell houses. Light Feet went to high school Dimas Aras members, Truman High School. So this is how some alliances happen. Light Feet was a dancer around 2007, but would turn blood and become violent in the street. On August 12th of that year, at 2.30 in the morning, Light Feet would find himself in a jam. He was on the 5 train at the Dyer Avenue station when he ran into his ops. It was Raekwon and three others. Basically, they were taunting Light Feet, surrounding him and talking crazy. They had the numbers, but Light Feet had a gun. The first story was, Light Feet took the gun from Raekwon and attempted to scare off his ops. It was determined that the story did not go that way. At first, it was said that whoever had a gun, stated that it wasn't that serious, and nobody would get shot. At some point allegedly, somebody heard, nah, f that. Shots rung out. Through the middle doors, Light Feet opened fire with a 38 caliber revolver, killing Raekwon and injuring the three other young men. Raekwon was shot twice once in the neck and once in the thigh. Another was also shot and still has the bullet lodged in his body. Eventually, Light Feet would get arrested in Coop City hours after. The following year, in October of 2008, while locked up, he would participate in another murder, along with fellow YG member Trey Guns. Others were involved as well. The grand jury indicted three New York City correction officers and 12 adolescent inmates on charges ranging from manslaughter, conspiracy, enterprise corruption and other offenses, stemming from an investigation into the death of 18-year-old Ice Loke at a Rikers Island detention facility. Ice Loke was a member of the Crips. It was alleged that officers Mackay and Nelson acted as managers for an organization referred to as The Program, which operated within the Robert N. Davron Center. Mackay and Nelson would cede responsibility for maintaining order to inmates known as the team whom they personally selected. In exchange for maintaining order in the unit, Mackay and Nelson authorized the team to extort personal property from their victims and to coerce them in a variety of ways. It is also alleged that Mackay and Nelson acted to conceal evidence of these crimes. According to investigators, inmates who went along with the program agreed to turn over a percentage of the monetary value in their inmate commissary account and also give up some of their phone privileges to the foot soldiers and enforcers of the program. Victimized inmates could also be forced to give up their shoes or items of clothing. Inmates who refused to go along with the program were punished by being assaulted by the inmate enforcers upon authorization by defendants Mackay and Nelson, and most instances would designate the date, time, location and manner of the beatdown. Mackay and Nelson allegedly facilitated the assaults by allowing the enforcers access to remote areas in the housing unit. The indicted correction officers allegedly attempted to conceal their participation in the program by failing to intervene or stop the inmate assaults, making false reports about the assaults or directing inmate victims to make false reports regarding the assaults or acts of extortion, and by using violence or the threat of violence to ensure the victims' continued participation in the program. Ice Loke was initially picked up on a shoplifting charge for allegedly stealing a cell phone from a store. He served a few months and was released on probation. He found temporary work at Staples. One night, he was asked to work late and wound up breaking his curfew, Jones says. Ice Loke was sent back to Rikers on the violation. The teen's mother says that he told her only two days before the fatal assault that he had had an argument with someone. Mother and son last spoke by phone on the day of the assault and were scheduled to see other that Sunday. It was said that Ice Loke and about four others had caught a blood slipping and beat him down just days before Ice Loke himself was killed. Allegedly, he had gotten into an argument with a guard and was transferred to another housing unit dominated by Bloods. Ice Loke being Crip was already a problem. Somehow, members of the Bloods and YGs were able to get to get into his cell, which was mysteriously left open. Allegedly, they put Ice Loke in a wrestling move called the Chicken Wing. The chicken wing is a modified choke hold, which leave everything exposed, as your arms are bond behind your back. Ice Loke was beat relentlessly. It was said he bleed out for over 12 hours and received no assistance. In all, the officers got beautiful plea deals, the max being 2 years. As for Light Feet, he got about 29 years for all his doings, up for parole after 21. Trey Guns got about 5 years for his participation. That's Light Feet for you. Next we will talk about another member named Tommy Cheese. He was also one of the top five paid in full gunners in the Boston Seeker houses. He is also the ex-boyfriend of superstar hip-hop musician and personality, Cardi B.
He was a solid football player and went to high school in PA, but would come back to Seeker every summer and get into trouble. Tommy G's didn't get wrapped up in the 2017 slut gang indictment because he wasn't around them when he came home in 2015. It was said that he was kicking it in Harlem and running around with Brooklyn rapper Casanova because he turned ape. Tommy used to be Desperado Milla Blood 2 originally, then turned ape. A lot of the guys from Slut Gang were paid in full YG's was locked up due to the RICO, but Tommy G's was still outside. In November of 2019, he would get into some stuff. He was accused of an attack on a 32-year-old father and his 8-year-old son that was caught on camera. The NYPD released a video last showing the father and son walking along West 112th Street just before 4 p.m. That's when a white BMW zoomed through the street, jumped over the curb and knocked the man and his son through a gate. The incident could have been seen as unintentional until cops say Tommy G's backed up into the street and got out of the car with a passenger. The duo is seen on camera running up to the injured victims to slash the man, then returning to the car where another passenger inside swapped to the driver's seat and quickly drove away. 27 years old at the time, Tommy GZ was charged with attempted murder and assault. The victim was a member of the Stones, a blood set. So Tommy is dealing with that situation. Another top 5 member was Crom Guns. On December 13, 2018, he entered a plea of guilty to conspiring to distribute, with intent to distribute cocaine, and one count of discharging firearms during and in relation to a drug trafficking offense. He was one of the best known and violent members of the slut gang. He was also labeled by news media outlets as a leader in the gang. He committed multiple shootings as part of the gang, including a March 13, 2012 shooting at the Coop City Housing Project, targeting a slut gang ally who failed to support the gang in a fatal brawl. On September 1, 2012, the shooting at the Eastchester Gardens housing project, where members of the rival Two Fly gang lived, and a February 18, 2014 shooting, in which he shot at rival gang members on the street, pursued them, and fired into an apartment into which they had fled. Crom Guns also attempted shootings on other occasions, including one that tends to suggest his role in the horrifying murder of an innocent 14-year-old boy. Crom Guns further trafficked firearms in crack cocaine and participated in robberies. Crom Guns has a remarkably low criminal record considering. He was caught with loaded guns on two occasions, once after shooting the weapon and assaulted police officers by throwing a bottle at them. You can say he violated the rules of the jail, possessing a dangerous weapon on two occasions, participating in two fights, and committing one assault. But a lot of guys do that, so, that's that. The court sentenced Crom Guns on October 18, 2019, to a mandatory minimum sentence of 15 years. But that about wraps it up for Boston Seeker, next we will be moving to the players from the East Chester Gardens, followed by White Plains BMB Gang. Afterward, we will tie in everything in chronological order. But as always, stay low, and thanks for watching.